Within this lesson, we'll be using division and the associative property to test for factors and observe patterns. Find the unknown factor. How did you figure it out? Did you know your threes facts? Did you know your sevens facts? Is 10 a factor of 21? No. How do you know this? Well, 2 times 10 is 20, and 3 times 10 is 30. So when we're counting by 10s, 10, 20, 30, and if we were to divide 21 by 10, we would get a remainder. If we were to divide 21 by 10, we'd actually get a remainder. The remainder would be a remainder of 1. So since we can't divide into it evenly, 10 is not a factor of 21. Here's another question. Is 3 a factor of 54? Well, what we can do is we can d use division to check to see whether or not 3 is a factor of 54. We can see whether or not 54 is divisible by 3. That is, a number where it is that there is not a remainder. So we call that as divisible by. We'll see whether it's not divisible by 3. Is it divisible by 3? If it is divisible by 3, then 3 is a factor of 54. 3 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. We bring down the 4, so we have 24 ones there. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24, and 24 minus 24 is 0. That is, 54 divided by 3 is 18. 54 is divisible by 3 because there's no remainder. So is 3 a factor of 54? Yes. 3 goes with 18 as a factor pair because 3 times 18 would give you 54. Could you name another factor of 54? The easiest one to think of is 2, and we could get the corresponding factor for 2 by taking 54 and dividing it by 2. 54 is an even number. It ends with a 4 there. 2 goes into 5, 2 whole times, 2 times 2 is 4, 5 minus 4 is 1, bring down the 4, 14 divided by 2 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14, 14 minus 14 is 0. So the corresponding is 27. That would be the factor pair that went with 2, where we used division to be able to find the corresponding factor. Think about this problem here. Is it necessary to divide to figure out if 5 is a factor of 57? What do we know about 57? Can it be divided by 5 exactly? It can't be divided by 5 exactly. What must it end in to show that it is, would be divisible by 5. That is, what number would be in the 1's place? Right, it would have to end with a 0 or a 5. So, it's not even necessary to divide to figure out if 5 is a factor of 57. We know that it is not. We're going to find the factors of 54 using the associative property. Let's start by thinking about the number 6. Is 6 a factor of 54? 
It is. 6 times 9 does give you 54. We're then going to use the associative property. We can break apart 6. Hey, we have a math fact for 6. It's 2 times 3. So we just replace 6 with 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 times 9 still gives us 54. All these numbers are still called factors. They're still factors. So now I know that 2, 3, 6, and 9 are all factors of 54. Now, I also can associate these by associating the 3 and 9 instead of associating the 2 and the 3. And I know that 3 times 9 is 27, so that 2 times 27 does give us 54. That means 27 also is a factor of 54. I also remember that 1 times 54 would give us 54, so our factors are 1, 54 for sure. We had 2 to go with 27. We had 3 that went with 18. Our association there is 3, let's see. 3 is here, so 2 and 9 would have to come together to give us 18. So it would be 3 times 18 does give us 54, and that was 9 times 2 being associated together with the 3. And I think we missed the 6 here. 6 went with 9. And then so those are our factors of 54. 1, 2, 3... 6, 9, 18, 27, and 54 by using the associative property. Let's try this with another number and a larger number. Let's try it with 72 with the associative property. Let's see. Let's start with the 6 fact. 6 times what gives us 72? Right, 6 times 12 gives us 72. So we will break apart 6 into 2 times 3, and then we'll go 2 times 3 times 12. Does give us 72. So instead of associating 2 and 3 together, let's associate 3 and 12 together. So all we did is we rewrote this where the parentheses, the order of the numbers, and the factors stayed the same, and we just change where it is that the parentheses go. Then we can evaluate that parentheses. 3 times 12 does give us 36, and 2 times 36 is still 72. So 2 goes with 36. So let's list it out. Here are our factors of 72. We start with 1, 2, 1 goes with 72, 2 goes with 36, as I had figured out below. The one that I haven't figured out yet is 3. I, let's rewrite this again. This time we'll move it around a little. We have 3 then. We'll go 3 times 2 times 12. And we'll take 2 times 12 to put that together. Notice the three factors on this side are still 2, 3, and 12. They are just in a different order. And since I'm trying to find the corresponding factor with 3, the number that goes with 3, I associated the 2 and the 12. 2 times 12 is 24, so that 3 times 24 does give us 72. So we have 1, 2, 3, and then we have 24, 36, and 72. There are other ones as well. We actually can go like, we know that we had 6 here, and we had 12 because we had that from our original, which was 6 times 12, giving us 72. I think that we actually even have 8, because we have 8 times 9, which is another fact that we have to give us 72. We could have gotten this from here if we had gone 2 times 3 times... Th um, let's see... 4 times 3. 4 times 3 being 12, and 2 times 3 being 6. And then we just move these factors around so that we get 
2 times 4 being 8, and 3 times 3 being 9. So that's 8 times 9. I also could have just remembered that 8 times 9 does give us 72. And then so there's different ways we can figure out these factors. Okay, it's your turn to try. It says find the factors of 60, use the associative property. I did start you off with 12 times 5 equaling 60, so I gave you two of your answers. List the factors. Pause the video while you do your work. Start with 1 and 60 for sure. All right, so 12. Well, let's see. 3 times 4 gives us 12, so 3 times 4 times 5 does give us 60. I also know that 4 can be rewritten as 2 times 2. So we have this here. Let's start right here with the 3 times 4 times 5, and we'll associate 3 times 4 to give us 12. So that's 12 times 5 equaling 60. So I know that I have 5 along with 12. I know I have 2 here along with 3 times 2 times 5. So it's 2 times 3 times 2 times 5, where there's three numbers that are being associated together. 3 times 2 is 6, times 5 is 30. So 2 times 30 gives us 60. So 2 goes with 30. Let's see what else we have. We'd have 3 going with 2 times 2 times 5. 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20. 3 goes with 20. 4 goes with 3 times 5, which is 15. Wow, look at all these. Did you get all of them? There's one more still. 6 goes with 10. The key is to... So we had 6 here, and here's 10. We know that 6 times 10 equals 60 as well. There's some more associations there where we would solve that. 6 times the 10. So there are a number of ways to find the factors. In fact, look at all these factors we had for 60. Is 60 a primer composite number again? Right, it's a composite number because it has m way more than two factors. So we can use the associative property to figure out and help us figure out factors. We also could just use division. We know that 60 is divisible by 1, divisible by 2, divisible by 3. We could test to see whether or not we can go 60 divided by 6. And then so that would have been another way that we could have looked at this here to find factors, to find the corresponding factor pair.